Hi, I'm Maria Delicato. I work as an associate here at Aaron Delgado & Associates. Today we're going to talk about how to file for dissolution of marriage or a divorce. So if you have come to speak to an attorney or you haven't had a chance to speak to an attorney because it's cost prohibitive, things I recommend. Go down to the clerk of court in your jurisdiction. Ask for indigency paperwork. They'll have you file an affidavit with the court, basically letting them know what your income is, what your assets are, and if you qualify as indigent, they will likely waive your filing fee. When you do that, I suggest you have what I call your packet together. So if you're planning on doing this on your own, which I don't recommend, but if you are, things you'll want to do. You'll want to go onto the Florida Supreme Court website. So go ahead and Google and type in Florida Family Law Forms. And the Florida Supreme Court website would be one of the first ones that come up or generate. Click on that. It'll take you to many, many family law forms. One of those is going to be for dissolution of marriage. If you are married and own a home, you cannot file for a simplified dissolution. If you're married and have children, you cannot file for a simplified dissolution. If you're married and you do not own a house and you do not have children, you can file for a simplified dissolution if you and your spouse agree on everything. So if not, which will be the vast majority of you, you'll want to file for your petition for dissolution of marriage. That petition is going to outline everything that you want. Now say you and your spouse, you've talked it out, you guys agree on everything. One of you is still going to need to file a petition for dissolution and the other would file an answer and a waiver. So if you agree on everything, what you're asking for in your petition is what you've already agreed to, right? If you haven't agreed to everything, ask for what you want. You never know, but if you don't ask for it, the court can't grant it to you, okay? So go in, read it, fill in your boxes. If you have questions, ask a lawyer. There are people that help file this kind of paperwork or help people fill it out. They're not lawyers. They can't give you legal advice. They don't know the recent case law. They don't know what's really going on for some of this stuff. They just have an idea of how to get it in, right? They basically watch this video. So if you have real questions, I suggest you contact a lawyer about the paperwork. Once you have your petition for dissolution done, you also need to do a notice of social security number. And this is important, a notice of confidentiality. Okay. As of July 1st, 2021, in our jurisdiction anyway, the clerk will no longer automatically deduct, redact your social security number from your paperwork unless you have your notice of confidentiality filed. You'll want to do it for your entire document. You'll have to file a copy of your driver's license so the court knows in fact that you have established residency or, or they have jurisdiction over you. And you'll also need to, if you have children, file um, a UCC JEA affidavit, okay? Um, all of those things can be found on the Supreme Court website, the form site. If you own a home and you want to sell the home as part of your divorce, that is not included in the standard form. That would be something called a partition. So you'll have to do a second count for partition. You may be able to find partition paperwork and get it done that way, um, but you have to ask the court for a partition, okay? Once you have your packet together, you can go ahead and file it with the clerk of court. The clerk of court, will, you'll ask the clerk for a summons and then they will, if you're pro se, they will send it to the sheriff for you. So once it gets to the sheriff, the sheriff will serve your spouse. The spouse then has 20 days to file an answer. And again, the answer and waiver can be filed at the same time if you guys have agreed to everything all with that packet right? If not, you start the regular process. Other things to note, if you have everything agreed on, 
on the Supreme Court website, it'll have something called an MSA, a Marriage Settlement Agreement. It'll kind of give you the base um, headings, I believe. If not, you'll have to just type everything up, okay? What your agreement is. The court's not going to do it for you. You have to have it. My other recommendation is to get a lawyer. Get a lawyer, tell the lawyer what your agreement is. Get the lawyer to write your agreement down for you. They'll tell you if you've missed something and then you can go ahead and get that done. If you have children, you need a parenting plan. Again, you can find a base example on the form site. That is not going to cover everything for every family. Special things to note, if you have children with other time-sharing agreements, if you have um, a child that you want to potentially go to private school, if you live in a long-distance relationship, those are all parenting planned things that need to be addressed up front and could potentially get complicated. Again, my suggestion to you would be to get a lawyer, but since you're watching this video, you may want to sit down and use it as a guide to try to get everything done. If you're satisfied with everything that you have, you can file it all with the clerk at the same time. Your MSA, your parenting plan, your answer and waiver, your petition, your UCCJEA, your notice of social security numbers, your driver's licenses, and in our jurisdiction, you have to file a notice, a certificate of completion for a parenting class as well. So you can get all of those things filed together. Last thing that has to be filed, according to the statutes, this must be, must be filed when you ask for child support, um, you're asked for alimony, and in our jurisdiction, it must be filed, period, for the courts. A financial affidavit. You can find one on the Supreme Court form, but again, they become complicated. Um, they are essentially the financial blueprint of your case. If your financial affidavit is wrong, the court is going to assume it's right. So it's very important you take the time to fill out the financial affidavit correctly and you file it with the clerk of court. So that is how you file for a petition for dissolution. Your petition, your financial affidavit, your notice of social security number, if you have children, your UCCJEA affidavit, your parenting plan, notice of confidentiality, driver's license, and of course, your certificate of parenting class. If you have any questions, Aaron Delgado and Associates is here and we can help you, guide you, and assist you through this process.